and welcome to database management systems today i'm going to teach you relational algebra and in particular a fundamental operation in relational algebra known as cartesian product the database that we are using for these lectures on relational algebra is this one it contains instructor relation having id name department and salary of instructors and contains a relation named course which has id name and semester and year of the course and it also contains teachers relation and what that shows is um, the relation between instructor and course how they are connected so when you see you can uh, you can see that there's an i underscore id which shows that instructor one is connected to a course id two and then when you check it out here you can see that course id two is dbms and instructor one is actually john so you can see that uh, john teaches dbms so that type of relation is formed using this table Now the fundamental operation Cartesian product is a binary operator. So a binary operator basically uh, requires two relations in order to work. So it's like having a multiplication or division in mathematics, which requires two operands in order to work. So same way you have Cartesian product, it requires two tables to work on. And it is used to display a combination of more than one relation. Relation means a table and it shows each row of the left side relation with a combination of each row of the right side relation and In a minute. I'm going to show you an example now Of this so let's consider these two tables. Uh, we're only taking the instructor and teachers tables So instructor contains this ID name department and salary and teachers contains ID and CID. And before I go there, I'd like to show you what Cartesian product actually does because you must have studied this in mathematics uh, set theory. So what it actually does on a given sets, you know, which are not actually tables. So I'm just going to show you that here. So let's consider sets A equal to 1 comma 2 and B equal to 2 comma 3. And I'm going to take a Cartesian product of A and B, which gives me pairs of the form. You can see right here what it gives me. Uh, pairs of these form 1, 2, then 2 with 3, sorry, 1 with 2 and then 1 with 3, and then it gives me 2 with 2 and it gives me 2 with 3. So this is what uh, a Cartesian product looks like if you're working with mathematics and you're working with set theory in general. But when we are talking about database management systems, then Cartesian product is between two tables. So I have two tables, one is here and one is here. And you might know that if one set contains two elements and second one contains two elements, your resulting set will be naturally two into two, which is four elements it will contain. So if you have two relations and one relation contains four rows and another contains three rows, then your resulting relation will contain four into three, 12 rows. So how that looks is you will have, uh, remember that here the IDs are one, two, three, four. So each row from here will be joined with one row from here. Okay. And the resulting table will have four plus two, six columns, because this one is having four and this one is having two columns. So let's see the resulting table. Let me just uh, remove 
uh, the annotation and you can see the resulting table right here. Okay. So this is your resulting table, what it looks like. Instructor cross teaches gives me this table. If you look at it carefully, you can see that in the last two columns, the values are being repeated. So one, two is coming four times, two, three is coming four times, and four, one is coming four times. And each time one draw from instructor is combined with it. So instructor one, two, three, four, again, one, two, three, four, again, one, two, three, four. So it is combining with each row of teachers. And this gives you totally 12 rows you can count and check. And the reason is because instructor has four rows and teachers has three rows. So in all, it gives you 12 rows. Now this is a very simple Cartesian product. And when you look at it, you might wonder what, uh, what does this do? It's, it's completely useless, right? Because it's just giving you a bunch of data combined with another bunch of data. How is that helpful to you? So now what, what we are going to see is how this helps and how you can write meaningful queries using Cartesian product. Okay. So first of all, what we are going to do here is we are going to find out instructors with only the IDs that match. Okay. Let's go back and look at it. So these are, this is your table from here. What I want is this, I ID should match with this I ID. So what I have is one is matching with one here. Okay, but then two is not matching with one. So I will discard this row. Then three does not match with one. So again, I'll discard the row. Four does not match with one, discard. One is not matching with two, discard it. Two matches with two, we keep it. Three does not match with two, so discard. Four with two, discard. 1 and 4, discard, 2 and 4, discard, 3 and 4 is discarded, and finally 4 and 4 we keep. So in all, only three rows will be selected. And now that information seems a little more interesting if you look at it. But how do you write it in the form of a query? So you'd write it as sigma, and now what happens is you have two different uh, columns here. Here also you have I underscore ID and here also you have I underscore ID. So it's important to understand that this one belongs to instructor relation and this one belongs to teacher's relation. So in order to differentiate between the two, we have to write it as instructor dot I ID and teachers dot I ID. Okay, we are simply doing this because the names of the columns are same. If they are not same, then you can simply write down this column equal to this column. There's no problem. Okay. And sigma, as we know, is used to select some rows out of the given number of rows. So this will simply do that. It will select the rows, which were 12 rows earlier. Out of those, it will only select the rows where this ID matches this ID. Now, along with all this, what we want is we want to get, now what essentially happens here is whenever you have two columns like this, I ID and another I ID, they will be removed uh, because they are duplicate. So not both the columns, but one of them will be removed when you get a result like this, because there's no meaning of having two columns with the same uh, values. So this is also having one to, th one to four. This is also having one to four. Names are same. So you can go ahead and remove one column. Now, what else do we want? We don't want all the information. I'm going to go ahead and select some columns that I want. So I want names of instructors and the IDs of courses that they teach. So I have taken out this column and this column. I don't want the rest. So it's the same query as we wrote earlier, but now there are extra brackets inside. So there's a bracket here and there's a bracket here. So these are now this result, which we got this table that we have, we are passing it here. And from there we are removing name and CID. So what that looks like is this, this is all you get. You get John, Mark, Mary, along with the courses that they teach, but only the IDs of courses. So now my next step would be 
to get the names of those courses because if I show you this information, then you would have to go to the course table and check, okay, which course is ID2, which course is ID3, because you don't know the names. So I want to show the names, I want to display the names. Then I have to create another query. And now for that query, first of all, I have to do a cross product with the course table because in order to get the name of the course, I require the course relation. So this is the relation I got using the last query. And this is the course relation, which I'm going to do, uh, which I'm going to perform, I mean, multiply rather. You can just say that you're going to multiply this with that. So this was my original query, okay. Whatever query we wrote here, it's the same query. But after that, I've written cross course. So what this helps me to do is combine this table with that table. So again, what happens? This is the table. It gets multiplied with this table. So again, you will get 12 rows. And each time, one row from here will be combined with one row from here. So uh, remember that this is, uh, this is having one, two, three, four. This is having three rows, John, two, Mary, three, Mark, three, and Mary, one. So it looks like this. You see John is coming four times, Mark comes four times, Mary comes four times. And each time it gets combined with one, two, three, four from course. Again, one, two, three, four. So it combines with each and every row of course. Okay. This is what your table looks like. And finally, after this, now you can see, uh, you, you begin to see actually some relation. So if you observe carefully, you can see that here there is a CID and here there's a CID. What I want to know is which course does John teach or which course does Mark teach? What is the name of that course? So I can get that now if I compare this ID with this ID. So you can see that two does not match with one. That means John is not teaching the course ID, uh, the course with course ID one but then two matches with two. So John does teach this particular course. That means he teaches DBMS of odd 2018. So this is matching. Then you can go ahead and look where else does it match. So three is matching with three. So you can say Mark is teaching DS. Then one matches with one. So you can say Mary is teaching DBMS. And now you can write down that query. So already this query is there. We are going to modify it a bit. So it looks like this. This was your original query. And what you've done is added to it sigma teaches.cid equal to course.cid. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Only three rows are selected where this ID matches with this ID. And once you get that now, what you want uh, again is that these two rows, these two columns are actually the same. So obviously we do not consider them. So this is your, your relation. This is what your table looks like. Okay. So this query is pretty easy to understand when you see it in this manner. Now all you need to do is remove all these things from here, which you don't require. You don't require the course ID. You don't want semester and year. You only want the name of an instructor and the course name. So we'll go ahead and write it. So same query, what is added here is pi i underscore name and c underscore name. If you are having trouble understanding what pi and sigma do, then you can go and watch the previous video on fundamental operations where I have explained what, what select and project are doing. Select will select num uh, the rows that you want and pi is going to select the columns that you want. So from this original table, what I want is only names of instructors and courses. So this is what you get when you write this query. Remember to close the brackets the way you open them. So here you have these two brackets. Then you have sigma operation applied. And with that, you are multiplying course. And then with this thing, you are going to do by.
So finally, this bracket closes here and this bracket closes here. So remember that you're counting the number of brackets. There are four opening brackets and four closing brackets. This is important. Okay. And so this is, yeah, finally some useful information. So when you write a query this big, it can get a little confusing. So we can go ahead and make it a little more simpler. I mean, make it a, a bit simpler. So what it looks like is, this is your original query. You can change it to look like this and your result will still remain the same. So this instructor cross teaches cross course, we are putting that in one bracket. So bracket instructor cross teaches cross course, it comes like this. And then what you do is you combine these two things. There are two sigmas, so you can combine them and write it in this manner. And in between you can use this operator, which is called and operator. So you are trying to match these two as well as these two. And once that is done, you can also use pi in order to select the columns that you need. So this way your query becomes much smaller. Okay, so with this, I'm going to end this video and see you for the next one.